I'm Scott Marthaler. Welcome to another episode of Rooftops of America. Today, we're counting the ways to enhance your high pointing experience or what to do after you've reached the top of all the state high points. But before we dive into our list, take a moment to click that red subscribe button below and the bell icon next to it for all the latest Rooftops of America updates. So let's say you've just completed the 50 state high points, or you find yourself needing something else to fill the time while you plan your next adventure. Here's a few ideas that you can add in or pursue to enhance your high pointing experience. Number one, the add-ons. For most high pointers, a quick stop at Point Reno in that District of Columbia is an easy addition to the list. But if you really want to go the distance and reach the farthest areas of the country, then adding on the territories is a must-do activity. With destinations in the Caribbean, the South Pacific, and the Eastern Hemisphere, the American Territory High Points are unlike anything you've encountered so far in your pursuit of the 50. These islands are sure to add a tropical and exotic flair to your high pointing adventures. Number two, going for seconds. While you could go and revisit all the high points again, maybe make them winter ascents for a tougher challenge, I'm gonna recommend a different alternative, going for the seconds. Defining what are seconds is not as straightforward as it sounds. There are several variations of this that are sure to keep you occupied some time, whether it is the actual second highest summit, another based on prominence, or one based on notability. And if that isn't enough, then you can also add in another twist to this. Visit the peaks that used to be considered state high points. Number three, heading down to the basement. You've already done the rooftops of America. Why not check out the basement? This entry is all about visiting the lowest point in every state. The lowest point in the USA is Badwater Basin in Death Valley at 282 feet below sea level. While not all low points are quite as dramatic as that, checking off these provides a whole different perspective and a chance to see other parts of the country. You'll still get a bit of elevation as well. The highest low point is higher than 17's state high points. Number four, going national. If you pursue this one, you're guaranteed to visit some of the most beautiful places in the United States. America's national parks are truly amazing. And what better way to experience them than to climb to the highest point in every one? On the upside, this is one you may have already started. Just by finishing the state high point list, you'll have checked off some of the big ones, like Denali, Rainier, and Mount Whitney. On the downside, this goal is going to be substantially harder and more technically demanding, as you will attempt some of the toughest peaks in North America. And if that isn't enough for you, then add in national forests and monuments as well. Want to stay local? then you can always start working on high pointing your state parks. Number five, going down the rabbit hole. High pointing is a great way to explore the United States and get off the beaten path. But if you wanna go deeper and take it to the next level and explore every nook and cranny that this country has to offer, then county high pointing may just be the ticket. If there ever was a wild child in the high pointing world, then this is it. With over 3,000 counties in the USA, you'll be at it for quite some time. And it's not as straightforward as state high pointing. It'll take you to every type of terrain America has to offer, and you'll be dealing with a lot more variables, such as private landowners, more research, an ever changing environment, and you better sharpen up your land navigation skills as well. Number six, the joy of tri-pointing. This entry 
is for all of those who are captivated by the allure of boundaries and junctions. And no better way is that showcased than where three distinct borders meet at what's called a tri-point. Don't be fooled though, this is not as simple as it sounds. As was so eloquently put by tri-pointer Bill Wenzel, tri-pointing is not for wussies. 38 of the state tri-points are on dry land, and the other 24 are on water. Some are rather easy, others are isolated and very hard to reach. You can also take it further and add in the tri-points created by our borders with Canada and Mexico. Finally, if you want to add a bit of icing to your tri-pointing cake, make sure to add on Triple Divide Peak. Number seven, take it to the extreme. Here's one for all of you adventurers that want to go the distance. Visit the furthest points of the United States in each cardinal direction. And if that doesn't quite do it, well, add in the ordinal points as well. Of course, there are variations on this one as well. Whether you decide to go for the furthest points of the United States with its territories, just the 50 states, or even only the 48 contiguous states. Once you finish that though, you'll also want to add in the geographical centers as well. And while you're at it, toss in the pole of inaccessibility. Number eight, scrape the sky. Here's one for all you architectural aficionados out there. This list is the counterpoint to the 50 state high pointing one. Here though, you're gonna be going to the top of the tallest man-made building in every state. Getting to the top of some of these buildings will probably require a bit more explaining and cutting through red tape. But should you succeed, you'll be able to take in some amazing views of some of the most noteworthy cities in the country. As an added bonus, this goal also marries up well with high pointing the 50 most populous cities in the country. Number nine, visit the neighbors. The neighboring countries to our north and south will provide a whole new set of challenges for any adventurous high pointer willing to check them out. The provinces and territories of Canada and the states of Mexico offer a whole new high pointing experience. Whether you go north or south first, rest assured, by the time you finish, you'll be in select company as few people have ever finished them. Another option, if you're looking for something a bit more tropical, is to head for the high points of the islands in the Caribbean. Number 10, going continental. If you're feeling really ambitious, got the technical skills and the deep pockets to match, then it might be time to go after one of the crown jewels of mountaineering, reaching the top of the seven summits. As one of the premier mountaineering accomplishments, this one will provide a significant challenge no matter what version of the seven summits you decide to attempt. Of course, if you are really ambitious, you could always make one master list and climb them all, just to be on the safe side. The bonus of this challenge is it is the only one that will take you to Antarctica. Number 11, the Grand Tour. If all these before you haven't satiated your high pointing desires, then it may well be time to tackle the world. And by that, I mean visiting the highest point of every single country. With over 190 countries in the world, there are plenty of climbing opportunities to be had. And these adventures will take you across the full gamut of high pointing. Whether it's barely above sea level on a golf course, to jungles, deserts, woodlands, hills, cities, and eventually to the rarefied air of almost every major alpine environment. And if you think the Seven Summits was a challenge, this one makes that pale in comparison. And now for our last entry, number 12, the final frontier. 
if you've reached this point and have exhausted everything else on this list, well, then really, there's only one other place to go. And it's time to fuel up your rocket ship and go where no high pointer has before, space and beyond. With commercial space travel soon to enter the realm of reality, then it's not too far-fetched to start preparing your expedition to high point out into our solar system. Who knows, you could be the first to reach the high point of our moon, or hike to the top of Olympus Mons on Mars, or stand atop Rhea Silvia, the acme of our solar system. And there you have it, a dozen ways to enhance your high pointing experience, or things to do after you've finished the 50 state high points. Of course, these are only ideas, and there's a lot of other things that you could also pursue. Some folks go after the tallest waterfall in each state, or the highest point in the state capitals, or the largest cities. Really, the only limiting factor is your own imagination. If you got ones that you're undertaking, or suggestions to add, let me know in the comments below. I'm Skymar Thaler. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Rooftops of America. Before you go, click that red subscribe button below, and I'll see you soon.